this banjo, I want to go over a couple little things um, instruction-wise that might help you with, uh, with your chords. Um, first of all, just your basics, uh, where to put your fingers. This is the G shape, <clears throat> what I call the G shape. And, you know, just like a guitar, it goes all up and down the neck and make, makes different chords with the same shape. Um, I start with my that finger, usually known as the ring finger. See my ring? Had it since 1980. Will not come off. Urgh, no matter how hard I try. But I don't try. So, uh, Third finger, fifth fret, fourth string. That's a G right there. It should match the open uh, third string. Okay. Uh, let's see, third string, second finger, usually known as the middle finger, um, fourth fret, third string. So, so far you got a G and a B, and by the way, this one, fourth fret, third string, should match the open second string. If your banjo's in tune, which mine is slightly, yeah. Second string, index finger, uh, on the next fret back, the third fret. So you got second string, third fret, index finger. Third string, fourth fret, uh, middle finger. Uh, uh, fourth string, fifth fret, ring finger. And by the way, third fret on the second string should match your open first string. So all these three match the str string underneath. The four, three, three, two, two, one. Okay, so all three of those together. Now I'm going to take my pinky. Pinky. I'm going to put it uh, on the first string back to the fifth fret. That should match your open fifth string. Okay, so that's your whole G chord. Now you might have already known this. Uh, my secret to uh, to running chords up and down the neck starts with right here. What I'll do with my index finger instead of just fretting the second string on the third fret, I'll fret three strings along the third fret: the third, the second, and the first. Then I'll put my other fingers down in front of that. Same chord, but I've got this sort of base of operations back here with my index finger flattened down on three strings. That gives me the ability to do this little hammer on here with my second finger. What I'm doing with my right hand there, I'm hitting the fourth string. I'm running my thumb, index, and middle, all three, on three, two, and one, and hitting a little chop, a little, little short, uh, dampened uh, pinch there. So I hit four, pinch, four, pinch. That's your basic chop on the, you know, bluegrass banjo, like so. And then I'll do one of those, four, and then pinch these three strings underneath. And then I'll do a four, three, I'm sorry, four, two, three, one. So four, pinch, four, two, three, one, four, pinch, four, two, three, one. Still, I'm not, I'm not moving my fingers. Now, uh, the other thing is, when I get to the third string with my thumb as part of that little roll, that four, two, three, one, when I hit the three, I'll do a hammer with my second finger. Four, two, hammer, third string, one. And because I've got my index finger all the way across back here on the third, well, not all the way across, but on three strings, three, two, and one, back on the third fret. So 
thing. And I put my other fingers on. Then when I do that hammer, I'm hammering from three to four. When I get to that. So it's four, two, three, one. So I combine that with my chop. Four, four pitch, four, two, three, one, four, pitch, four, two, three, one. That's my basic little rhythm lick when I'm doing backup stuff. You could just like that, or just uh, not do the hammer. Like so. But that's a G chord right there on the. Right here we can see. Five, four, three, five. It's G. Move it back two frets for an F. Uh, move it up two frets for an A. B, C, which would be related to the G, G, C, so you can, those are, um, in the key of G, your family is um, G, C, and D, so G is starting with the fifth fret, where your third finger is, uh, C is starting with the uh, ninth fret, I'm sorry, tenth fret. So you're going 5, 10, D is starting with 12. And you'll notice if your fingers get more compressed because the frets get closer together as you go up the neck. And by the way, this is up the neck is this one. Even though it's pointing down, you're still going up the neck. So we go G, C, D, C, G, C. Doing that same chop that we were doing where, where you hit four and then pinch three strings underneath. All with your thumb, index, and middle. That's your first chord exercise is doing G, C, D. And when you're just when you're just working on, on fingering with the chords with your left hand, you can just do a strong cross and not worry about what your right hand is doing. Like so. Up and down, up and down. Okay? So, that's my G shape. Now you'll see the other advantage uh, in uh, doing the little flatten thing with my index finger across three strings is all I have to do to change over to a D shape is move this finger, my middle finger, down a string. Now I've got an E flat there, but if I move back a fret, I've got a D. So I move up a fret, move my second finger across to the third string, G. Move back a fret, move my second finger across to the B string, the second string, got a D. That's all I move is that one finger because I've already got um, my index finger in place back here. So G, D, G, D, G. thing you can do with your uh, D shape. Here again, I'm moving back and uh, one fret and moving my middle finger over to the second string. I move it up to the ninth fret where my, my uh, third finger and pinky are on the ninth fret. That's another G chord. So I can go D, G. D, G. And the next thing I would want to do would be go back to my G shape here, my real G chord on the fifth fret, where my middle finger is on the third string. 
move up to the eighth fret, move my um, middle finger across to the second string. That's another G chord. So I've got G, G. It's an inverted G. But here again, all I'm doing is I'm moving one finger from the third string to the second string. 